Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related to the subject fundamentals of the manufacturing processes and we are talking about uh, um, the welding joining of the metals where in the last uh, presentation I have talked about the uh, weldability or the ease of welding. Uh, but in this uh, presentation initially I will talk about the uh, welding defects and thereafter I will take up the fundamental uh, fundamentals related with the heat treatment. So, uh, the common types of the defects which are dis defects and discontinuities which are observed in the weld joints it includes like uh, uh, the cracks of the different types. Uh, which may be solidification crack, uh, cold cracking which is, this is also known as a hydrogen induced cracking and uh, uh, then liquidation crack which is obtained uh, uh, next to the fusion boundary. Uh, so, liquidation crack uh, is observed in uh, uh, next to the fusion boundary especially in uh, the high solidification temperature range otherwise and then under bead cracking under bead cracking. The uh, solidification crack is ob, uh, mostly observed at the center line of the weld joint. Cold cracking uh, occurs uh, uh, mostly in the weld metal and also in the heat affected zone. Liquidation cracks occur near the fusion boundary and under bead cracks, cracking occurs uh, below the weld bead may be in the heat affected zone. Uh, uh, near the heat affected zone uh, due to the separation of the um, metal and the inclusions due to the tensile residual stresses which are acting uh, in the weld joints. Apart from that uh, the there is a lack of another important defect is lack of penetration and the lack of fusion. Uh, both of these defects are caused by uh, like say in order to identify the lack of penetration or lack of fusion like this is the, the groove which has been made and uh, when the welding is done due to the limited heat metal just get deposited over the surface of the uh, metal, but there is no melting. So, that is called uh, the lack of uh, fusion means in that case fusion is not uh, there and uh, the, when the fusion is there, but the penetration is limited then it leads to the situation of the lack of penetration and both these kind of the defects are caused uh, due to the low heat input or the less H net uh, than the required value. So, which is leading to the deficient melting or less melting of the uh, limited melting of the base metal or no melting of the base metal just molten metal is getting deposited over the surface. So, this kind of defect is simply taken care of by increasing the welding current in case of the arc welding or by slowing down the source of the heat uh, whether it is the la laser beam, electron beam or your uh, uh, any arc uh, speed or uh, the flame speed. So, whatever is speed uh, uh, whatever the source of heat is being used for the fusion purpose is speed of that is reduced so that uh, H net can be increased because H net normally is found inversely proportional to the speed higher is the speed lesser will be the heat input. So, increasing the factors uh, increasing the, uh, the heat uh, uh, being generated uh, through the suitable control of the process parameters or reducing the speed helps in uh, overcoming the issue related with the limited uh, penetration. So, now coming to the cracking related aspects solidification cracking uh, which occurs in, uh, mostly uh, along the weld center line especially in case of the high solidification temperature range otherwise. So, in order to overcome this basically efforts are made in such a way that the residual stress magnitude is reduced and the restraint conditions under which welding is carried out that is reduced and uh, also it is done in such a way that the uh, the grain struct uh, the impurities uh, uh, the weld metal composition is modified in such a way that uh, such kind of solidification temperature range can be reduced. So, suitable selection of the filler metal um, considering the dilution is also kept in mind while uh, selecting the filler so that the composition of the weld metal is such that solidification temperature range is reduced. Uh, so, these are uh, and then the grain structure grain structure is refined. So, these factors actually be helping to the helping to reduce the uh, solidification cracking tendency. Cold cracking is uh, mostly caused by the high hardness 
uh, being caused due to the martensitic transformation, high hardness and uh, and development of the tensile residual stresses, these are the three prime factors which are uh, required, uh, three or four factors and the hydrogen concentration uh, in and around the weld zone. So, in order to uh, uh, this kind of the cracking, cold cracking is also called delayed cracking because it occurs after some time of development of the weld joint. So, in order to take care of these, uh, these factors basically preheating is one of the important step which is uh, uh, taken. So, so preheating reduces the martensitic transformation, reduces the hardness, reduces the tensile residual stresses as well as allows the diffusion of the hydrogen from the weld zone uh, effectively. So, preheating depending upon the kind of the carbon content and carbon equivalent in the steel uh, may be from 150 to the 300 degree centigrade preheat can be applied. Then another is the selection of the suitable filler means such kind of fillers like austenitic stainless steel and the nickel uh, alloys which can accommodate the hydrogen in the weld mat which can uh, accommodate the residual resources easily uh, are also used uh, um, for controlling the uh, cold cracking uh, because this will be helping to reduce the residual resources as well as these will be accommodating the these will be accommodating the residual resources as well as these will be accommodating the hydrogen which is present in the weld metal. Uh, reduction in the heat input is basically used for uh, uh, as I have said liquidation cracking is caused by the wider solidification temperature and so limited heat input uh, is one of the method preheating is also helps in uh, reducing the liquidation cracks. And uh, for uh, underbead cracking, uh, un underbead cracking and the cold cracking uh, factors are almost a similar kind of the factors where in high hardness, hydrogen contained, tensile residual stresses, and the martensitic transformation or high hardness of the heat affected zone, all these factors contribute significantly. So, reducing the residual stresses, uh, reducing the restraint conditions under which welding is being done, increasing the preheat and using the, the filler metals like the nickel or the austenitic stainless steel, uh, they will be uh, permitting the softer uh, weld as com uh, and uh, they will be reducing the residual resources uh, which will uh, be decreasing the tendency for cracking under the underbead. Uh, or below the uh, weld bead which is being deposited since this kind of bead is formed uh, below the weld bead that is why it is called underbead and mostly uh, the uh, the main cause of uh, the underbead cracking is the jet direction limited jet direction ductility which occurs due to the presence of the silicate inclusions or inclusions in uh, in the steel so under the tensile resistances tensile residual resistances these tend to get delaminate or uh, means uh, separate from the metallic matrix say for example this is the well joint and if the tensile resistors are being developed and inclusions are running in this way then the separation of the inclusions from the metal matrix can lead to the development of the underbead cracks. Uh, apart from this uh, there are issues related with the improper selection of the welding, welding parameters uh, careless uh, uh, deposition of the molten metal by uh, the welder. So, that will be leading to the unfavorable shape of the weld bead which may be in form of like say over reinforcement in this manner. So, the reinforcement is height is too much leading to the higher stress concentration at the toe of the weld or the underfill in the weld like this. So, the weld cross sectional area is reduced or it may be leading to the presence of the uh, Mm, this kind of undercuts due to the unfavorable selection of the welding parameters. So, this is undercut. Uh, so, these are unfavorable shapes uh, uh, which are uh, un, uh, which are normally not uh, uh, acceptable uh, accepted uh, uh, when uh, these kind of shapes are generated during the welding. Uh, so, uh, proper care is needed in order to avoid such kind of uh, the undesirable shapes and for this purpose proper control over the manipulation of the weld metal, proper deposition of the molten metal, proper selection of the welding parameters is important. Welding parameters in terms of the uh, welding current, uh, arc uh, and open circuit voltage and the welding speed these help in uh, uh, controlling the 
uh, unfavorable discontinuities in the weld joints. Now coming to the um, uh, another important aspect of the manufacturing, so now we have talked about the four uh, broad um, and main manufacturing processes so far uh, in this course these were like uh, the casting was one uh, was primary shaping process, then the forming was another deformation based approach for also changing uh, the shape of the bulk materials uh, uh, through the deformation based approach and then we have talked about the machining and uh, machining is uh, the uh, process where an unwanted material from the stock is removed in order to get the desired size and shape and uh, then we have also talked about the joining process which is a positive process simple shapes are brought together in order to get the desired size and shape through the joining. Now the fifth category is, is the uh, property enhancement, property properties improvement of the components manufact being manufactured. So, this property enhancement uh, uh, can be in the number of ways, but there are two broad categories where, uh, about which we will be talking. One is the bulk material properties where uh, the heat treatment uh, means thermal treatment to the material is given for the variety of purposes and the second is only the surface properties. So, here entire bulk material uh, properties are modified and here only surface properties are modified. So, uh, under the each of category there will be different functions which will be realized uh, uh, like say these uh, when heat treatment is carried out of the bulk materials it is it is done for different purposes. Uh, so, that uh, the, the one of the main uh, main purpose is to reduce uh, uh, to uh, basically to change the change the structure of the bulk materials. So, we have the desired combination of the mechanical properties. So, mechanical property improvement means mechanical property alteration is one of the objectives of the heat treatment. So, that it can be used for the only purpose another is real stress relieving or reducing the residual stresses being developed in course of the uh, manufacturing by different processes say it is either the heat treatment or say it is the casting or uh, uh, the machining or the welding. Um, so, in all those cases if the residual stresses are being developed they will be degrading the pro uh, mechanical performance of the weld of the components. So, we want that residual stresses are relieved. Then uh, it is also done uh, to to facilitate to facilitate the further processing of the metals, especially in case of uh, processing of the metals, especially in case of the like cold working. Uh, we know that whenever the deformation based approaches are applied material gets a strain hardened. So, a strain hardened material will be leading to the increase in strength and hardness and reduction in ductility which makes the further mechanical working difficult. So, we need to uh, do the uh, means softening of the material which uh, is done through the process annealing. So, one of the main one of the purposes of the heat treatment is to facilitate the further processing of the material uh, because of uh, increase in hardness and ductility in mechanical working process like cold working. So, that will be reducing the ductility increasing the hardness making the material difficult to process further. So, cold drying or uh, uh, the cold rolling kind of processes are uh, those where it may be required to do the process uh, annealing and uh, then uh, then there may be uh, the like uh, whenever it is done it is done sometimes to induce the softness in the metal so that it can be processed uh, uh, by the conventional processing like in the material may be very hard may be, may, may be very uh, of the limited ductility. So, if uh, the heat treatment is done then it allows the deformation uh, machining easily. So, uh, even some of the materials when they are heat treated uh, they get softened and uh, in the soft state they can be uh, conventionally processed easily either by machining or the forming or by deformation processes. So, uh, softening is uh, normally done in some of the cases in order to uh, 
uh, facilitate the uh, manufacturing processes so that they can be processed further. So, uh, heat treatment is one of the big category uh, for the bulk material property modification through change of the structure which is done for uh, uh, improving the mechanical properties, reducing the residual resources, facilitating the further processing through the process inhaling or inducing the softness in order to ease out the uh, processing uh, of the metal. Uh, for example, copper is uh, normally uh, processed, uh, similarly the steels are also um, heat treated if they, they have been hardened. Uh, so that uh, they are machining uh, and the deformation can be facilitated and then another category is the surface property enhancement. Surface property enhancement there are various groups uh, among the surface property enhancement uh, like one is where surface uh, composition is modified, another is no composition modification only a structure is modified through the application of the heat. Then there is uh, the mechanical deformation is applied at the surface and uh, no heat. Uh, so, in this case basically the, the thermal treatment is done, here the chemical modification is applied, here just a mechanical deformation like short pinning and sand blasting kind of the methods are applied and then there is one more where uh, the coatings, claddings etc. are uh, applied at the surface so that the properties of the surface can be enhanced. So, these approaches are based on like this is the surface whose properties need to be enhanced. So, what we will be doing? We will be introducing according to this compositional modification approach, we will be introducing the composition alloying elements suitably in the bulk material like it may be like for aluminizing for aluminum, vanadizing for vanadium, uh, then siliconizing for silicon and uh, uh, for uh, chromizing for chromium and then uh, like uh, carburizing carbon is introduced nitriding nitrogen is introduced for carbon nitriding carbon and nitrogen both are introduced uh, at the surface of the uh, material so that the compositional modification depending upon the process this depth may be very less or may be very high may be uh, like say uh, uh, 2000, 3000 micrometer uh, to like say just 5 to 10 micrometers depending upon the process which is being used. Uh, another method is where just thermal treatment is applied. In this case, uh, the, the component, uh, those uh, kind of metal systems which experience the structural modification whenever the heat is applied. So, the controlled heating followed by the cooling. So, heating followed by the controlled cooling results in the structural modification near the surface. So, this is the kind of approach which is used for modifying the structure as per the requirement so that this property near uh, this functional surface at the surface means the properties of the metal at the functional surface can be modified. This is what is tried in case of uh, the no compositional modification just a structural modification is applied. So, laser hardening flame hardening uh, are this kind of the methods where no composition modification only the structural changes are brought in at the surface of the material. Third approach is where the deformation is applied. So, in this case either like say the, the control uh, rolls or the, the, the short blasting is done. So, the controlled near surface layer deformation is achieved and this kind of the deformation leads to the uh, work hardening or strain hardening of the surface layers and uh, also develops the residual compressive stresses at the surface uh, due to the near surface layer uh, deformation in very controlled way. So, this way we will be getting the improved fatigue resistance, improved hardness of the material. This is another approach and the coating and the cladding, uh, coating and cladding is uh, another approach where in the bulk material whose property only surface properties need to be improved. So, we will be selecting the suitable material which can really offer us the properties which can be, uh, 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 we will be selecting the suitable material uh, so that uh, when it is applied on to the surface of the the metal it offers the properties desired. So, there are number of methods for depositing the coatings as well as claddings. So, uh, like the thermal 
A spring is one of the category uh, of the processes where uh, uh, the thin layer of the coatings uh, is deposited uh, depending upon the, um, the kind of the metal systems. Uh, uh, the coatings may be like say uh, 20 to 2000 or 4000 micrometer in thickness. Uh, so, harder is the metal, lower is the thickness and uh, softer is the metal, greater is the thickness of the coating which is normally deposited through the, the number of thermal spread coatings. So, in this case approach is that the bulk material surface is covered using the suitable material whose properties are desired. So, in this way we get the properties of the uh, uh, properties uh, of the material which has been coated. Uh, uh, so, that the functional performance of the surfaces can be improved while the underlying material does not affect um, the uh, uh, properties of the underlying materials of the base metal are not affected. So, basically it is just like enclosing the base metal which will be taking the load, but a special functional properties at the surface like high, like high hardness, good corrosion resistance, good lubrication properties all those are offered by the material which is deposited uh, or cladded at the surface. Yeah. So, uh, coming to the fundamental principles related with the heat treatment uh, for enhancing the properties, uh, basically the one simple approach is used in the heat treatment. If you just uh, uh, forget for a while uh, the approach for reducing the residual stresses. So, uh, enhancing the properties uh, of the bulk materials. Uh, using the heat treatment which basically involves the heating of the material followed by soaking so that uniformity uh, in the temperature in the component being heat treated can be achieved and uh, a uniformity in the phase uh, phases present in the bulk material can be realized and thereafter controlled cooling is uh, obtained. So, this uh, is the kind of combination which is used for any kind of the heat treatment process. So, depending upon the kind of the metal systems, the different types of the heat treatments are there, but uh, the general approach in all those heat treatment process is simple where uh, the properties desired, properties required are like say for a given functional purpose what are the properties are needed those are identified and based on the properties required we try to alter the we try to alter the microstructure of the bulk material through the controlled uh, he, through the controlled heating and cooling cycles. So, the microstructural modification in the bulk material is realized through the controlled heating and cooling so that uh, we have the desired structure and so the properties. So, altering of the microstructure uh, is one of the uh, 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 main uh, approach uh, in the heat treatment where, where in will uh, be realizing the Mm, the desired combination of the properties or property enhancement in the bulk material. Uh, structure has the two main aspects, one is about the phase structure and another is about the grain structure. When we talk of the phase structure means a bulk material made of the number of uh, crystals. So, what we say this is a polycrystalline or then it is made of the number of grains which are also uh, may be termed as the different phases which are there. So, the, the when we talk of the phase structure which means the type of phases which are present in the metal like there may be just 1, 2, A, B, C, D how many phases are present like a metal may be having just A and B like in low carbon steels there may be like ferrite and perlite or perlite and cementite. Similarly, in aluminum silicon alloys like it is aluminum then aluminum silicon eutectic. So, depending upon the kind of the metal systems there can be the, the one or more number of the phases. So, what are the different types of phases which are present in the metal and their relative amount. Since each phase offers a different set of the properties, so uh, if the soft metal is present in more uh, proportion as compared to the hard phases, so in general metal will be of the lower strength and the lower hardness. So, the relative amount of the different phases like soft phase is 10 percent and hard phase is 90 percent. So, like in low carbon steel may be having the 80 percent of the ferrite and 20 percent of the perlite. So, it is about the proportion of the 
different phases or the relative amount of the different phases which are present and third is the distribution where what is present it is about uh, what is present at the boundary what is presented within the grain or like in the casting or in the welding. So, if we see there may be possibility that uh, this portion may have one kind of phase, this may have another kind of phase, this portion may have another kind of phase. So, base metal, heat affected zone, fusion boundary, weld metal, all these may have the different phases. And even if we consider the given metal, in that case, like some of the things may be present within the grain or some of the things may be present at the grain boundary. So, where what is present? among the present phases that is what is identified through the distribution of the phases where what is present. Among the grains we had need to among the I means in terms of for the grain structure uh, we see that the grain sizes means uh, there are different ways to measure the grain size like the average diameter of the grain or the interdendritic spacing, intercellular spacing depending upon the kind of structure which we have uh, the, the grain size is measured in different ways. Then the shape of the grains, the, the, the grains are of the needle shape or circular shape or polyhedral or very irregular or star shape so uh, or it is in Chinese script form. So, there are different shapes. So, that shape is uh, need to be uh, identified and uh, there is general way to identify the shape factor is the aspect ratio uh, where in the length to the width ratio is used to define the shape aspect uh, needles will have the greater aspect ratio as compared to the uh, uh, circular uh, geometry or uh, the spherical shape. Uh, phases and the distribution means which kind of the grain uh, distribution of the, the grains where which type of the grains are present like the boundary may be coarser like in welding fusion boundaries are coarser than the weld fusion zone. Similarly, in the casting uh, the grains are very fine near the mold wall and they uh, will keep on growing as we move uh, closer to the center. So, in which way the grain size and the shapes are distributed in the bulk material. So, these uh, the uh, structural uh, modifications. So, whenever heat treatment is applied either there will be change in type of phases which are present or there will be change in the relative amounts. So their distribution may also be modified. Similarly, the grains structure grain sizes may be altered, the shapes may be altered and distribution. So, any change in any of these 6 components can be are uh, termed as the change in microstructure. So, basically through the heat treatment attempts are made to modify these uh, uh, different constituents related to the phase structures and the grain structures. Now, we will see the typical heat treatment cycles which are used in case of uh, the different kind of the metal systems. For example, like most of the steels are uh, heat treated in one way while uh, the precipitation hardening will uh, alloys are heat treated in different way. Say heat treatment cycle for the steels mostly it follows the heating for austenitizing, austenitizing so that the entire bulk material is uh, austenitic and then we allow the cooling at different rates as per the kind of heat treatment which is performed. So, highest cooling rate is used for the hardening purpose where in quenching is carried out then somewhat higher cooling rate is carried out for the uh, higher cooling rate is applied somewhat lower cooling, cooling rate is applied for the normalizing. So, the only the grain structure is defined and then further uh, lower cooling rates are used for the annealing purpose. So, that soft structure is obtained. So, this is the portion where heating is done this is the y axis is time or uh, temperature and x axis shows the time. With regard to the welding this uh, variation is uh, very high because welding cycle goes in like this while uh, the, the, the thermal cycle for the heat treatment goes uh, is much longer. So, heating followed by soaking during the soaking homogenization of the composition homogenization of the phases and austenitization takes place during the heat treatment of the steel. So, annealing is normally done for the softening purpose uh, for grain refinement relieving the residual stresses increasing the strength and hardness normalizing is carried out while for increasing the hardness wear resistance uh, normally the quenching of the steel 
is carried out. So, here now I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation, I have talked about the fundamental approaches which are used for enhancing the properties of the bulk materials as well as surface materials and um, uh, in which way what is the fundamental approach for changing the properties or improving the properties uh, of the bulk materials uh, through the heat treatment like it is the altering the microstructure of the metals and what are the different uh, uh, things that we look into the microstructure and uh, what kind of heat treatment cycle is used uh, in case of steel. In subsequent presentations we will be talking in detail about the different heat treatment processes for steels as well as aluminum alloys. Thank you for your attention.